We're going to start our lecture today by solving four problems that was that were given as an assignment uh, in, the la in the last time. So those problems are 21, 22, 23, and 24 from, from section 1.1. And uh, I'm going to show you the, the table that we're going to use to solve this problem. It's about sampling, different types of sampling. So we have uh, a tab table with different uh, animals here. So it's a population of animals in, in the following table. And the population is divided in, into four uh, groups. So we have mammals, birds, reptiles, and fish. The first problem is that we're going to draw a simple random sample of eight animals from the list of 40 animals in the table. So problem uh, 21 then. So we're going to start just understanding that there is a table, that there are four groups. Uh, in the first group, mammals goes from 1 through 10. Uh, in the second group, birds go from uh, 11 through 20. Reptiles go from 21 to 30. And finally, fish go from 31 through 40. So in problem uh, 21, we're going to draw a simple random sample of a animals. So that's the, the, the size of the of the sample. So, and we're going to draw this sample uh, taking all the animals as uh, one uh, single group. So I'm going to say that animals uh, numbers are going to be from 1 through 40. We learned this the last time. We can use uh, animals Oh, oh, we can use uh, X. So in this case, I'm using animals equals 1 through 40. So I'm going to get a sample from this uh, population. So I'm going to write the name of the population, animals. And I'm going to, I'm going to write the, the size of that sample. I only need eight values. So I'm going to run this into R, and and that is going to be the way that we're going to solve this first problem. So we have uh, animals, uh, animal uh, equals one through four. This is equivalent, remember, as saying that lowercase c. Then we enumerate all the numbers up to. 40, but uh, this is a, a long way to do it. So we're going to use just 1 through 40. Then we're going to get a sample. Remember, any R command should be written, should be uh, typed in with a, a lowercase letter. So we're going to get a sample from then the name of the population or the name of the group where you're going to sample from. So animals and then the size. So I'm going to get uh, these nine numbers. So I'm going to write that I need to to get into my uh, group, uh, into my sample uh, animals num number 29, 40, 7, 9, 5, 26, 20, and 12. If you run this prob uh, problem in your on your own R console, the numbers that you're gonna get here are gonna be different because we are using a, a random number generator so any any sequence is going to be a random randomly uh, obtained so let's continue with the second problem now uh, now problem uh, 22 is going to be about uh, so let me write here we're going to solve problem 22 so for 22 we will need to read now the corresponding statement. So for problem 22, we're going to obtain another sample. And this time the sample is going to be obtained in a different way. So we're going to draw a sample of eight animals again. So the, at the end, the sample is going to contain eight animals. But the way that we're going to get those animals is going to be different. 
Now we're going to draw a simple random sample of two animals from each group. And also the question is, what kind of sample is this? So we have in this problem now uh, actually four different problems because now we're going to work on, on these four groups independently. So I'm going to get two animals from, from this uh, group two more animals from this group, two more animals from this group, and two more animals from this group. So this is like uh, sampling four times to get my 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 sample. So, and that's what we're gonna do now. So instead of writing animals as we did before, now we're gonna use a different uh, uh, variable name. So I'm going to say, for example, we can use mammals. So for example, Mammals are going to be the animals that go from 1 through uh, 10. And also we have birds, and they go from 11 through 20. And then we have uh, reptiles going from 21 through 30. And finally fish fish go from 31 through 40. And I'm going to get my sample. Uh, the final size is going to be 8, but I'm going to uh, select two animals per group. So I'm going to I'm going to sample mammals. I'm using capital letters for my variable names and lowercase letters for the R commands. This is mandatory. The the lowercase for R commands. For uh, variable names, you can use capital letters, lowercase, uh, you can include numbers in between, it's up to you. So I'm going to sample mammals, and I'm going to get only two animals from that group. Then I'm going to sample birds, and also get only two animals for, from that group. I'm going to sample uh, reptiles, and also I need two. And finally, I'm going to sample fish and I need two more animals. So in total, I'm going to get a animals at the end. So let's write here, I'm going to write the numbers so that the R is gonna provide me. Again, if you run this into your R console, the numbers that you're gonna get are gonna be different. But the, at the end of the day, we are doing the sampling in the way that was indicated. So let me show you uh, the numbers I'm going to get. So I'm starting uh, by uh, writing my four groups. So mammals go from one to ten. Uh, birds go from eleven to twenty. Then I have reptiles, and those go from. 21 through 30 and check my computations and can make mistakes you can you can email me and say and, and, and let me know that I made a mistake and I can correct that so I have my four groups now and I'm going to get the samples so I'm going to get the sample from mammals I only need two elements for, from that group so I'm getting 5 and 10 so I'm going to write 5 and 10 in my notes, then I'm going to sample birds. And you can sample in a different order, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you're gonna get two from each group. So, oh, sorry, I made a mistake here. I need to sample birds, but I need to get only two elements. So I'm going to get 16 and 17. Then uh, I'm going to sample uh, reptiles. Reptiles, I'm going to need only two elements. So 29 and 22 are the candidates for my sample. And finally, I'm going to sample fish. I'm only needing two more animals. So 35 and 37. So I now, now I have my, my 
a uh, animal sample and that sample includes two elements from each uh, group subgroup so you have here the, the results remember these are going to be different numbers from the ones that you're going to obtain so this is from the first group from the second group the third and the fourth so mammals uh, birds reptiles and fish and that's uh, problem 22 uh, the question what kind of sampling is this so when you do this kind of sampling this is a stratified sampling so we call this stratify stratify sampling okay now 23 so let's read let's read the problem first so 23 is here so we're going to obtain again a animals but the way that we're going to obtain those a animals is going to be now different so we're going to draw a simple random sample of two groups of animals from the four groups and construct a sample of 20 animals by including all the animals in the sample groups so what kind of sample is this okay so that's problem 23 so now we're gonna work we're gonna sample not the animals individually uh, we're gonna sample the groups so we have four groups so we're gonna have only four groups those groups are group one which is uh, mammals then group two is going to be um, birds then group three reptiles and group four fish so now instead of um, including the number of the each animal uh, now i'm including the number assigned to each group so this is group one group two group three and group four so i'm going to sample now uh, from this set of numbers so i'm going to sample groups and i'm only needing uh two uh, uh, numbers from here so and those are the uh, groups that I'm going to include completely in my final sample. So let's do that. So we're going to go and check here. So I'm going to create now my population is just for numbers. The numbers that indicate the uh, corresponding um, subset of the animal population. So I'm going to sample groups and only need two values. So I'm getting three and two. So three and two are the groups I'm going to include in my uh, research or investigation or survey or whatever I'm doing. So, so but what is the final sample? The final sample is not three and two. The final sample is all the elements from group three because these, these are groups nor not animals so my sample is going to be a 20 animal sample is going to be uh, group three is reptile so you're going to include all the values from the reptile group so 21 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. And then you're going to include animals from group 2. Group 2 is the group of birds. And those that group goes from 11 through 20. So you're going to write here 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So this is the sample. This is the final sample. It's a 20 animal sample. And what kind of sampling is this? When you are sampling just the groups, so let's right here we have one is mammals, two is birds, three is reptiles, and four is fish. So when you are sampling from here, so you are sampling just a couple of groups. This is a cluster sampling. So, and it's very uh, used, this method is very used in political science when you are just uh, uh, conducting surveys in different districts in, in, in a state or in the country to just investigate uh, political preferences. So you go and, and you should ask anyone li living or able to vote in that district uh, to have cluster sampling. Other people prefer for, for the same kind of testing uh, use, uh, to use stratified sampling. So again, you uh, in this case, for every district in the state, you get uh, a simple random sample uh, of the same size. So that's stratified sampling. So we have stratified sampling, cluster sampling, and finally, we have one more problem. And with that, we, we're going to finish. Um, this part. So 24, the last problem is the following. So 24. So now the directions to get the sample are that uh, we're going to choose a random number between 1 and 5. Include the animal with that number in your sample along with every fifth animal thereafter to construct a sample of eight animals. What kind of sample is this? Okay, so let's do that. Now the directions are that we're going to uh, get a number between one and five. So we're going to have our st the starting point for our sampling is going to be a number between 1 and 5. So we're going to sample here. Use one value, that's the starting point. So we're going to sample the starting values. So, and I only need one value. And that is going to be the initial uh, value and then every fifth element is going to be incorporated into the sample. So let's get a number between 1 and 5 randomly. So we use R again. So now we have the starting point. It's going to be a number between 1 and 5. We can use this way or you can use the other way, which is just 1 through 5. Remember, I'm going to sample this group of numbers but only I only need one element that is going to be my starting point so I'm getting the number three so three is my starting point then I'm just going to add five to every uh, previous number to get the the sequence so this is my starting uh, point then three plus five is going to be eight plus 5, 13, plus 5, 18, plus 5, 23, 28, 33, and 38. So they're going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 elements. So this is my sample now. So you're going to pick these uh, animals from the original list. So for example, 3 and 8 are going to be from mammals, then 13 and 18 from birds, uh, 23 through uh, 23 and 28 from reptiles, and finally 33 and 38 from fish. So this is the, the sample. Uh, how do you call this sampling or this sample? This is a systematic sample. So this is a systematic systematic sample.
okay? It, it is systematic because you are applying a formula. So you get a value and then you're gonna add phi. So that's the formula. So the previous value plus phi is gonna be the next value. So previous value plus phi is the next value. So this is a formula. So this is the formula. So when you use a formula, then that is systematic sampling. Okay, that's all uh, that I wanted to share with you corresponding to the last lecture because um, I think it's important for you to understand the different kinds of sampling and also how to use R to get your samples. We use in uh, all different kinds of sampling, we use the same command, we use sample. Sample, the only difference was the, the group that uh, we used to sample from. So in the first case was the entire population. In the next cases, uh, there was a different uh, ways to do it. Uh, subdividing by subgroups or you sampling the, the numbers of the subgroups or in this case sampling a starting point and then just uh, applying a formula. Okay, so now we're going to continue with our, with our class. So today we're going to go on section uh, 1.2. So that's the section that we're going to cover today, section 1.2. And that section is on page, uh, let me see, uh, this is on page uh, 12. This is page 12, and this is about types of data. And this section is very important because if we will understand how to identify the data, then we're going to be able to apply the, the right model later to do our investigation of data. So let's see. So the first thing that we're going to uh, learn is that um, we collect data so we usually collect the data and then we need to classify our data we need to classify uh, the data that we collect and to classify the data we have uh, different ways to classify data so one way is just uh, when you have one quantitative one quantit uh, quantit okay <laughs> this is not very good quantitative or quantitative and qualitative So we have two kinds of data, quantitative and qualitative. So, and this data is uh, represented by variables. So we're gonna have quantitative variables or we're gonna have qualitative variables. So what is the difference? So quantitative variables are numerical. Numerical. Numbers used as numbers numbers use as numbers and quality uh, variables are categorical uh, values uh, in other words they are use labels sometimes we use numbers numbers as label this is important numbers as labels or numbers as numbers so labels so and we're going to use uh, quotation marks to indicate or to distinguish categorical uh, variables from numerical variables so for example we can say that uh, a categorical variable is just uh, gender so you can say female and you use a 
quotation marks to indicate that this is a categorical variable. So, and here just numbers. So, let's uh, try and work on some of these examples. So, we have example 1.11. And in that way, we're going to understand better the difference. This is difference is super important. So, example 1.11 is on page 13. And you have here the problem. So, uh, let's see. Okay, this is a summary here. Quality variables classify individuals into categories and quality variables tell how much or how many of something there is. Okay, we're gonna go through this with more detail later. So first just check these uh, four cases. So uh, example 1.11 is about uh, this problem. Which of the following variables are qualitative and which are quantitative? So the, the first one, a person's age. So uh, another way to uh, to see numerical variables or so quantitative variables is when you say, uh, is this a measurement? Is this a count? Or is this a label? So with those three questions, you're going to be able to identify, identify quantitative and qualitative uh, variables. Quantitative, uh, is when you respond yes, when you say is this a measurement, are these measurements, are these counts, then you have a quantity variable. If you say yes to the question is this a label or are these labels, then you have a quality variable. So a person's age, you are measuring time, so that's a quantity variable. A person's gender, that's a label, then there's a quality variable. The mileage in miles per gallon of a car, is that a label? No. Is that a count? No. It's just a measurement. You are measuring the number of miles that your car uh, consumes per gallon of, of gasoline. Finally, the color of a car, is that a measurement? Is that a count? Or is that a label? Then you see, wait, wait, the color of a car is just a label, then that's a quality variable. So for this problem, just for you to have in your notes, I'm just going to write these answers, and then you will not be able to remember later. So we have first a person age uh, is a number, and then this quantity and as I mentioned before is you are measuring is a measurement of time the time that you have spent on earth then we have um, a person's gender person's gender is just a label so that means that this is a quality variable then we have uh, the mileage the mileage of your car and you measure that in miles per gallon so this is another number this is a number so this is a quantitative and also is a measurement measurement of a rate, a rate, so the number of miles per one gallon, does a rate. Finally, we have the color of a car, this is another label, and this is then a quality uh, value or um, variable. So now we're going to have different kind of uh, way to uh, 
classify data. Remember, we are classifying data. The first way was classifying data uh, based on the kind of value, either numerical or categorical. Now we're going to go and we're going to check more about quantitative data. So now the next part is the following. We have data that can be numerical or categorical. Okay, quantitative or qualitative, but now numerical, we have two kinds. So we're going to have discrete, discrete or continuous, continuous data, discrete, discrete or continuous. So you can have the definitions in your book, you can check them. So let's read them and then we're going to provide examples to understand this better. So when you have discrete variables or continuous variables, the differences are the following. Discrete variables, you can read here, are quantitative variables whose possible values can be listed. The list might be infinite. For example, the list of all whole numbers. They are talking about a list of numbers. If you can enumerate the elements, then that's a discrete variable. If you can enumerate all the elements. Continuous variables are quantitative too, quantitative variables that can take on any value in some interval. The possible values of a continuous variable are not restricted to any list. So for continuous variables, you cannot list all the values. It's impossible. Even though it can be an infinite number of values, or they are usually an infinite number of values, you can uh, list them. When you have a list of infinite whole numbers, you can list them because you can just use one, comma, two uh, dots, and then infinity, that's the list. But you cannot do that with continuous variables. So, and this is very, very important. Uh, this concept, so I'm going to uh, give you more ways to identify or to distinguish these two uh, kind of um, data. So let's see. So we have we have a um, discrete. And continuous. So they say that this is a list and this is uh, no uh, no list is possible. But the other way that we you can distinguish discrete and continuous is when you know that the discrete is uh, the result of counting. The result of counting, then that's discrete, and also the result of measuring. So when you are measuring, uh, usually that is continuous. So let me give you more examples. So this is data, usually quantitative data or numerical data. So. Uh, the number of children is discrete and because it's a result of counting but there is another way to say that this is discrete so when you have two numbers two consecutive numbers two consecutive candidates if you have a number in between that cannot be uh, possible that is part of the, the group, then you have a discrete uh, case. So for example, you, you can have two children, you can have five children, but you cannot have 3.5 children. So this is not possible. 
So the, the, the way that you understand that this uh, set of the number of children is discrete is that uh, only certain values are possible. Only certain values are possible. So there are numbers like 3.5 that are, that, is, uh, that are not possible to be the number of children. So that's the reason number of children is discrete. So if you uh, talk about the height of children, the height of children, then you have a variety of answers. So an infinite number of answers. So and this is the result of measuring. So this is the result of counting. And this is the result of measuring. So when you use a stick to measure the height of a child, then you're going to get any quantity. So you can get uh, uh, 5 feet. You can get 5.5 5 feet. You can get 5.1 feet. You can get 5.123 feet, and, and you're gonna, you, you're never gonna be able to list all the possible values. So uh, you cannot list all the possible values. And if you have two consecutive values, you can find another in between and then another in between the other two and so on so there is no way for you to finish this so this is going to be a continuous variable the height of children continuous so we said before only certain values are possible in this case all the values in, in an interval all values in a given interval are possible so for example can we find uh, children with height between three and six feet yeah between four and five yeah between five and six or between whatever number that you decide you're going to be able to find values in a given interval so that means that the variable is uh, continuous. So let's see, uh, you're going to solve now problems. And that is going to be your assignment for this section. So um, just to finish, let's, let me just give you information. We, we, we talk about uh, quantitative data being subdivided in discrete and continuous. Uh, there is something similar that we can do with qualitative data. Qualitative data. Can, do, can be subdivided in ordinal data and nominal data. So ordinal is when the labels uh, have an order. For example, you can find something like uh, strongly disagreeing strongly disagree you can have disagree when you are asking questions to a people or you can have neutral and you can have a uh, agree and you can have strongly agree so there is a an order in this label so uh, for example, when you are uh, buying clothes, clothing, so you can have for a t-shirt, you can have small, medium, and large. Those are labels, but they have an order. So then the variable is ordinal. Nominal is when the order doesn't matter. So you just have uh, Republican and Democrat and 
independent so is there an order here no so gender female male and other one another is also nominal so that's uh, another way to uh, to classify qualitative data so now i'm going to assign you problems that you're going to solve and you're going to submit by using the corresponding uh, section in classwork 1b so the problems that you're going to solve are the following so we have a, a section section 1.2 uh, on page uh, 15 so we have exercises there so you're gonna solve uh, first 15 through 24 15 through 24 uh, and this problem you are just answering the question or identifying whether the given uh, cases correspond to qualitative or quantitative data then you have problems 26 through 32 in this problem you're going to classify the data as ordinal or nominal then we have 33 through 40 and in these cases you need to distinguish discrete from continuous and this is important because especially in this last case if you have discrete data then you're going to use a different kind of uh, models than if you have continuous data so it's important to know what kind of uh, data you're going to work on so and then you have section 1.3 1.4 these are sections for you to read only so section 1.3 section 1.4 so please read these sections is more terminology and you're going to have uh, now the opportunity to work on your first homework and on your first quiz so uh, do that and we're going to continue uh, the next time with uh, chapter 